60 semi-individuals on one gallery with one CO. Dealing with 60 different mentalities. And the niggas on the island, you got the wildest niggas from the five boroughs. Back then, we didn't have the Bloods and the Crips back then from the island. They was out in California and all that, yeah, but it wasn't none of that. It was always 5% of, you know what I'm saying, the Latin Kings, you know what I'm saying, the Nation of Islam, the Muslims, you know what I'm saying? New nigga come in the house, he got to shine on, go get that. When I first went to Rikers Island, I was naive to the whole thing. So when I went to Rikers Island, I went with a dapper dance suit. When you come in, they got bids on you. I could be like over here on my house, I could be right here. And I'm gonna be situated right with the whole boy. He's, he's in a bubble. He could be in a bubble talking to the police. I'm going in with a pair of construction boots, brand new, fresh. Same day I copped them. I go to sleep. When I wake up, dudes go in my locker and they take my shit. I'm off the rip. I'm like, I'm already telling my homies in there, like, yo, see what I'm saying? Those are mine. You know what I'm saying? Niggas already claiming them shits. He wanted my lumberjack shirt and my British walkers. Dudes don't even know what's popping. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, everybody in the radio house already know you're like, dude, dude, yo, the niggas supposed to pee because everybody get on the gate like, yo, I'm sick. The jacket is hot, it's me. And you believe the kid got the nerves to put my boots on and go to sleep with my boots on? So a nigga tried to stick me up in my suit. He tried to talk me out of my suit. He said, if I don't give up my suit, I'm going to get hurt in so many words. So me, I stole a nigga. Nine times out of ten, if you fold during that test, you will be nothing. Everything that you have of value will be belonging to someone else. You will never know a moment's peace. You will always be the wreck of that prison. That same jewelry I wear now, if I wear a $50,000 watch, you know what I'm saying? A Jacob now, and you know, God forbid I go to jail tomorrow, I, and I got this $20,000 ring on, I'm gonna wear that tomorrow. I'm gonna wear it in jail. You know what I'm saying? It's just like they're recognized, you know what I'm saying? You come through there, if you, if you's a real nigga, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Like, shit all gonna come to you. This is where you gotta show whether you a warrior or you a slouch, you know what I mean? The island is just, is just gladiator school, right? Over, it's just gladiator school. Getting you ready for that, for up north, you know what I mean? Fighting, stabbing. On the island, you for dolo, ain't no ratchets. You ain't sending no slugs long distance. All that, yo, I'm good with the razor, but not good with the hands. Family, if you can't box, you can't cut a nigga fight. Niggas was doing the 52 shit. Niggas had the shit all down to the knees. When the first nigga tried me, I made a, a not, not an example out of him. But instead of getting a Grammy, I got an Oscar. I seen niggas coming there with a one and three on the island. I couldn't be humble there. I had to be an animal. I had to literally become a beast. Slaves, look at this shit, man. Slaves, B. Come up in there, we gonna rip your fucking head off. We was able to get somebody 25 years for uh, pulling a raise out on someone and extorting them and stealing from them. So doing from a year, now you're doing 25 years. <laughs> and, and, and wind up with 30 years, 25, all jail cases. First thing I had was a pen in my motherfucking hand. And that little big pen I took, that shit went through his eye, went through his jaw. I motherfucking severed the nigga shit. Then after I finished stabbing the nigga, that wasn't enough. I had to starve the nigga out, drag him, drag him, then rob him. As soon as you come through, no matter if you gangster or not, niggas gonna test you. Money got it and I need it, I'm coming for it. Society is two type of men, those who carry the whip and those who carry the bag. One is a strong, one is weak. The strong man gonna survive, the weak man gonna have to pay the price. Bottom line. I was on my way, I'm going to C-74. I'm 16, so I gotta go to C-74. That's where they house the adolescents at and shit. And you know, adolescents is the niggas that wig out the most. Razors, bangers, and all this crazy shit. You know, it's a different feel. You know, I grew up in Sparfit, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing for a little fight or nothing. But now you step into a whole new league where it's razors and bangers now, you know what I mean? And there's niggas that's out there, they just looking for a rep. You good with your hands, that's nice, but when a nigga back that matawak out on you, that's gonna stop everything real fast. Wait a minute, homie, pass that off. You got somebody sleeping in they bunk. You wanna get at him, you, he right there, he sleep. You wrap some tissue around his feet, clown the nigga, whatever you wanna do to the nigga. Clown him, burn his feet, make him wash your clothes. You can see which one is the weak one. Sometimes if they so weak, you gotta get them out of it. Cause something is going to happen to him. Because one nigga, we birthday, we birthday cake the nigga toes and shit. Like his toes are sticking from under the blanket and shit. So we birthday cake this shit, boom, boom, put mad tissue on this shit. Boom, lit the shit on fire. This nigga, you know, and he ain't get all wild and jump up like everybody else. He just pulled his feet under the covers. 
So we like, oh, we had to run and dive in our bed, like, oh shit, cause this is a dawn. This is like um on um, Mar is Mar 4. Mar 4. So you know it's dorms and shit. So we just run and jump on my on our bed like, oh, this nigga about to burn the fuck up, be this nigga. Niggas like, nah, fuck that. Run over there and stomp the nigga out. You know, you gotta stomp a fire out. He stomp niggas just up. started stomping the map. Other niggas that don't got their props, they not touching that jack. That's crazy. They they not don't even think about it. Don't even wish about it. I roll in, I say, nigga, who running the phone? Yeah. That's my first question. Who the fuck runs the phone? Wherever I went, I had that mic. And that's gangster. Wherever I went, let, let me reiterate that again. Wherever I went, I controlled that mic. Yeah, believe that. Man, I see niggas get killed on that jack, man. I seen one time I one time a nigga when police, when CEOs went to do the count. I always kicked the bed. And the guy didn't move. So we kept kicking the bed. The guy was laying up there, dead. There was a nigga missing underneath the the, the, the bed. He was leaking. They had they, they, they had stuffed him underneath the bed with the, with blankets over him, and he was leaking. And I'm like, you know, and I'm I know a nigga dead, but the nigga underneath the bunk. So that's when the squad came up. They killed the nigga over the jacket. But the first thing I do when I walk up in there, you know what I mean? I'm the master of deception. I go up in that motherfucker and the first thing I'ma do is see who's rocking that shit. I'ma tell the nigga, yo, give me five minutes on the phone just to let my people know where I'm at. And once I do that, that's it. I'm not even unpacking my bag. That phone goes with me in my back pocket. Now whoever's gangster, whoever got time on that phone, and who got prime time, I'm controlling. Even if I ain't got nobody to call, I want that mic. Why? Because that's a sense of control and I'm a control freak. It is prohibited for you to get on that fucking phone and touch that jacket. Yeah, niggas get banged out in the shower. Niggas get banged out talking on the telephone. Niggas get banged out coming from the visit, going to the visit, coming from commissary, coming from the mess hall, walking down the hall. I used to blow niggas in front of police. The motherfuckers would turn their face like they never seen anything a day in their life. I banged their man up to the point where police had him like this, son. Shack the fuck up, and he thought he just got over and just stabbed my man up, and I ran up on him in front of the police, back the police up, but bitch, and caught him, bang, bang, and bang the nigga out in front of the police, son. Brother threw a, put a hot baby oil in the hot water, threw it on him, and when he grabbed his face, his skin started peeling, and he stabbed him all up. 